Welcome to part one of our series on motor controls. And motor controls, yeah, it's the third fundamental in, in what have I, I've identified as um, the fundamentals in our sport, right? Our order of the sport. And it really is fun. Having good, nuanced, fine motor controls really is what allows the adjustability in our sport. So, you know, any, I say it right, any track, any conditions, anywhere, any vehicle, freaking bring it on. And it's, it's mainly because I know that I can adjust for whatever the conditions are, whatever the vehicle is, doesn't, doesn't matter. I put myself in a position to be able to adjust. And that's ultimately what we'd like everyone uh, else to have is be, be able to have that adjustability. So yeah, there's three parts to this. And the reason that we did it is when I first wrote this out, it became crazy long, a lot of information. I actually recorded a, a video for the whole thing and it was too long. So what we decided to do is break this down into a little bit more bite-sized chunks. And I really like that idea. And the first part is what we're going to talk about is, is identifying why motor controls are adjustable and how we kind of need to get this into your, your own program. And <clears throat> I'll start it off with a story. And the story is when um, I was a student at Freddie Spencer's before I became an instructor, a guest instructor, then a full-time instructor is it's like, Oh, you got to go for a ride with Freddie. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to go for a ride with Freddie. No, you got to go for a ride with Freddie. Then I went for a ride with Freddie. And even, in, even in the later years when I could get a ride with Freddie as an instructor, I would do it. And the first takeaway with Freddie was when you go for a ride is that, he wasn't in a hurry to go fast, but you went fast. It just, but he wasn't, he wasn't chasing it. And then the second thing was every input had, had a reason. It was deliberate. How he went to the brakes, how he built brake pressure, when he broke, uh, when he built brake pressure, how he released the brake, how he picked up the throttle. When did he build throttle? How he moved his body, all those things. And I, yeah, I was honestly fairly over, uh, I was overwhelmed with how much information came to me on that, on that tulip ride. And that's when later on, when I had to go back and relive those laps and think about it is I realized that a lot of what I'd been doing was having sort of one input, one way of inputting for everything, whether it was throttle, brake, steering, doesn't matter. Everything was kind of one input. It's like, well, how can, how can Freddie yeah, how does how does he go around, you know, a tight radius corner, get in and out of it? How does he go through a long radius entry corner? Well, I I I just didn't get it, and that's really what this is about. So let's let's get you in a position to start thinking about how adjustable your motor controls can be, and more importantly, how are we going to do that? So it starts with let's let's start with some basic definitions, and the basic definitions of of motor controls are, um, and then when we look at motor controls. We want to, we understand that it's it's every physical input that you're doing. So it's it's your braking, it's your throttle, um, it's your steering, all those how you're releasing the clutch, right? All those different things uh, are part of motor control. So any physical input that you're putting into the bike, that's a motor control. So the definitions are three: is the the first five percent. So the first five percent is the initial application of inputs into your vehicle. So the first little, the first little input, the second one is the last 5%, which is the last degree of application for your vehicle. And we'll talk about that. And the third one is the degree of application. This is the real meat of it. And what we're trying to do with the first and last five is to, is to hone that degree of application for your desired outcome, right? Short radius corner, long radius corner, no grip, a lot of grip. So we need to set ourselves up so we can have that degree of application. So I want to, I want to, I want to linger here for a second because this is really the, the key part of it is a lot of, a lot of times in motorsports, it's been this sort of, um, we've, we've had this idea of everything is on or off, right? Um, on the brakes hard or I'm on the throttle hard. Or it's, you should be on the throttle or you should be on the brakes. There's nothing in between. And yeah, I mean, I guess that's true, but 
there's it's so much more nuanced than that. Yes, you should be using the controls all the time, which means you're in control, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's heartbreaking all the time or hard acceleration all the time, right? So it's it's the degree of application for your given situation. And I, I wanted to I wanted to talk a little bit about that because the whole idea of this first part is for get you to think about those three aspects of all your motor controls, the initial, the degree of application, and then the end. So let's talk about the first 5%. Yeah, the first 5% is really about setting yourself up for what's coming up. So if your habit is to go to the brakes at say 40%, but it's only a 20% situation, you're going to overslow. You're going to transfer weight too much or get your apex too early, whatever it might be. So the idea of this is to set yourself, your first 5% sets you up for what's coming. And that is the initial squeeze of weight. Uh, if it's the initial squeeze, squeeze on the brakes, weight to the front, you know, how you're loading the suspension, how you're loading the tires or the throttle, right? How you pick up the throttle to bring the weight back, have everything have a load, have the appropriate load. And <clears throat> I think that, you know, the idea with this is it's not, think of it less on time as think of it as being deliberate because the faster you go, our 5% gets condensed, but it's still there. Meaning that how you build the brake pressure, how you're transferring the weight, right? Once you go faster, we run out of time to do it, but it's still there. So think of it as being deliberate in your first initial squeeze of the brakes, your first initial squeeze of the throttle, um, or your steering input, how you're setting yourself up for the rest of the action. And that's really what the first 5% is about. So it's, it's getting you, getting you ready for that. So first 5%, we've got the first 5%. Awesome. And then let's talk about the last 5% before we talk about degree of application. So the last 5% <clears throat> really is that final degree of application that that really gets you ready for the next application. So whatever your next control is. So that last 5% is that, that little bit of extra steering at the end to get the direction you want. It's a little bit of holding onto the brake and releasing it uh, so slow to bring the steering and speed down to where you want it. Um, it's, it's, it's finishing... Um, yeah, even even the last five percent of throttle in some applications, how you're rolling off the throttle for certain things is quite a big deal. And there's absolutely places on the on the professional circuit that we spend a lot of time on how we roll off the throttle. So the last five percent, really thinking about it, is is that extra degree, that extra little bit of adjustment to get the result that you want for the next application. So the last five percent also a big deal on on you know, how you're, how you're moving uh, weight around, um, how the weight transfers, all those different things. And then <clears throat> after, you know, after that, then, then we can really talk about degree of application. So, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, the first, the first five, um, then we got the last five. So we have those, but now we need to talk about what's in the middle, that degree of application. And what the degree of application is, this really refers to how much control input is needed for the upcoming situation. So the, you have to think about the first and last five as kind of a consistent and deliberate way of starting and ending your application. But the application is changes based on it, right? So short radius corner, for instance, on braking, right? First or yeah, you know, first and last. Well, then the middle gets shrunk because it's a shorter radius corner. A longer radius corner, then our braking becomes that degree of application is longer because that's what it offers. So <clears throat> degree of application is, is really what the, the, the meat of what you're trying to accomplish. But we have to put ourselves in a position for that with that first and that last five. So <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think that... Um, Let's let's get into some of the takeaways with with those things. So key takeaways with motor controls in general, it's understanding that we want to be adjustable. We want to be in a position to be adjustable with our motor controls for the varying corners, track conditions, grip, all those different things. 
and where that starts off with, of course, is the is the first uh, and last five. And we really want to replace that whole on-off approach with a more nuanced um, and proactive set of techniques that allow you to be that adjustable. So realize that it's not just on and off. It's it's breaking it down into those those sort of three elements, right? The initial, the degree of application, and then the ending. So I want to spend a little bit of time talking on the vision and focus part of motor controls. And first of all, that, you know, the reason that we're teaching the vision skills, vision skills are what lay the foundation to have good motor controls. Because the idea is, is we, we first need to recognize what we're trying to accomplish with our references, with our vision. And then ultimately what we're trying to do is tie our vision to our motor controls. So, you know, when you apply, when you apply the brakes and you, for instance, look into the corner where you want to let off the brakes um, or you start your turning, whatever it might be, is we're trying to match what our goal is, right? Where, where, what our depth perception is picking up and we're trying to match our motor controls to that. So this is why vision and focus have got to come first. Then we've got motor controls. So think I really want you to think about that, right? The key to this is connecting your vision to your motor controls so you can get your brain ahead of the situation so you can adjust. That first 5%, right? That refers to the initial um, control input which sets you up for the next action. And yeah, I think that, I think it's, um, I, I think the initial, the initial is what sets you up to be proactive and that's what sets you up. So really respecting that first 5%. Um, and as you, as you build that, as you build that, um, that part of the, of the motor controls. Yeah, the last five really focuses on releasing that final bit of control to have the desired result you want. And again, it sets you up for the next action. So if you want a better apex, right? You want a tighter apex, you want a, a earlier apex, how you're controlling that last 5% will get you there. And whether it's you know steering, whether it's even the clutch release, right? That last 5% of your clutch release and how the rear wheel even catches up with the motor is so, so important. So really think about having a deliberate 5% because that's what sets you up for essentially that, that next action, right? Being, being in a spot to be um, precise with it. And then, yeah, the degree of application. The degree of application really is um, the amount of control, right? The amount of input you're giving it based on the corner, based on the track conditions, based on your vehicle, all those different things. So the degree of application is, that's really where all of this, that's where the adjustability is, but we have to put ourselves in a position to get there with the first and the last five. And yeah, so I wanted to make this part of um, part one, a place where you could really start to think about that and separate that, separate it from, Okay, I realize that you know, each part of that motor control, right, the beginning, the middle, and the end all have a purpose. And the purpose is, is to allow you to basically handle any situation that you want. So part one, let's get our brains thinking about why motor controls are important and starting to break them down into that, those three first five, um, your degree of application and last five. So you could ultimately be the adjustable person on track that you that you want to be. So, all right, part.